Hello world of YouTube and welcome to the next slice of List Week 2019, my top 20 best songs that I heard this year. Now I'm not limiting, limiting it to singles, deep cuts are also eligible for on here, and I know a lot of these had videos, but not all of them did. Like my songs, my, like my worst songs list, it's one artist per entry, but that was a really hard thing to do for this year. Features and stuff don't count, obviously, but this was a great year for music and I felt like this is a much harder list to pull together than even last year's. However, if you would like to see my hypothetical list, if I could pull together multiple entries from the same artist, it's linked in the description. Without further ado, let's get it started. Like I said in my review of this album, this song in particular stuck out to me because not only was the instrumentation just so well constructed, but the lyrics felt relatable in the purest way. I love the the metaphor of feeling like loose change as a person, like feeling like disposable to somebody. It's such an emotional, like sounding idea that the, the four of them just convey so well. I love the hook of the song. I love the swell throughout the instrumental. This is just a great classic sounding country song that just hit me really rawly and I loved it for that. She plays bass, she plays bass. And Newbie wrote a cute little fun indie song about being in love with a with a girl who plays bass. And it's just it's just such a nice cute little almost twee lyrically song with some nice indie instrumentation in the mix. I love the guitars of the song. I love how the drums sound produced. <clears throat> and I love her vocals. I love how they kind of just wave around in this instrumental with, a, again, another killer fucking hook on here that its lyrics kind of cheesy, but I love it for that in the best way possible. It's a great song that has just a lot of good going for it. I could see this being in, like, a nice indie film and just having to be a great focal point. And, yeah, it's just, it's so good. I'm best moments on Weezer's latest record. High as a Kite is that classic sounding vintage Weezer but funneled through some nice little uh, glockenspiel instrumentation with a chorus that again just hits the stratosphere that Rivers is singing that he wants to go to because he's as high as a kite. He doesn't want to uh, leave the earth but he wants to get pretty far away from it and I think that out of the songs that try to embody some of the ideas seen on the Black Album, that is the best moment on it to me, personally. Two tears in the bucket, fuck it, I don't care about nothing, nothing. It's just Danny Brown coming together with Run the Jewels on a beat produced by JPEG Mafia. What the fuck isn't to love about this song? Everybody gets it, they get in on the cut. Uh, Danny Brown spits some nice bars and run the jewels, of course, run their gambit as usual. One of the best come-togethers in hip-hop this year, and a year that's been full of great team-ups. This is a fun song, and it's a nice moment on an already great Danny Brown po project. Fuck a fake smile. Everyone kind of praised Thank You Next for its blunt honesty and the way Ariana Grande kind of shed her skin, her kind of mask that she was wearing amidst the Sweetener tour and Sweetener era that kind of caused her to rush an album like Thank You Next out that wasn't actually bad by any stretch of the imagination, which is amazing the fact that she turned around so quick with something so honest but still had its great catchy moments. Fake Smile to me was the moment where it kind of reached a great creative apex. From the sample work that ties really well into the song and album's themes to Ariana's complete honesty with how she feels, this is the moment to me where the album just completely won me over. Like, I liked Thank You Next. I thought it was a cute song. I liked the other singles she dropped, um, even though they don't necessarily fit the theme of the record. But I love Fake Smile. I love the chorus. It seems like the bluntest way to get the album's message across and I like that for it you know sometimes I don't mind when an artist wants to cut the shit and be real with you and Ariana had some really hard times over the last year leading up to thank you next so I'm glad that she did write a song that was as blunt as she could be 
fuck a fake smile. Going through shit, I want to be me. And I respect that, and I love that. And the song is great, too. It has a great hook, it has really tight verses, and I love that instrumental with that sample that um, Wu-Tang also used on Tears. It's a good, it's a good song to sample, and again, it fits really well. The big bang happened when the black balloon ignited. I feel the like I said, in a year where we got fantastic collaborations, you got one of the best rappers to pop the back end of this decade coming together with one of my favorite hip hop producers that is a sequel to my favorite song from said rapper's last record. It's like a match made in heaven. Dope hook, dope verses, dope beat. It is fire. Bars for fucking days. Denzel gets it, and he has had a great year, and this was just an apex of that. Could not be happier with how this song came out, and I'm so fucking into it. It's a song that still gets heavier play from me. While I, I like a lot of the vignettes Black Midi took their sound on Schlagenheim, I wish there were more songs like 953. It's the explosive start of the record, and the band just sounds like they're tearing apart their instruments while they played them. I adore this fucking song, and I think it starts Schlagenheim off on the best note possible, and it, it sets you up for such greatness. It lets you know what type of band Black Midi is. Like I said, I just wish... They did more like it. Because I love the weird vignettes. I love the the drawn out weird songs like BM BM BM. But dude, this song fucking slays. And it's so goddamn good. And it, it, when people talked about, and when people talked about having issues maybe translating how great they are live in the studio, the minute this song went off, I was like, nope, this record, they get it. They made it happen. Because this embodies a lot of the raw emotions and, and passion they have for playing their craft and it's done perfectly in the studio this song is great if you haven't listened to schlagenheim you're sleeping on a great record and this is the note that it starts off on one of the dopest instrumentals on ginger featuring some of the tightest verses from the group. This is one of the moments on the record where I feel like they really balanced both ideas that Ginger was going for harmoniously. I think everyone on this track gets it. I think the hook is really good. And this is just a dope ass moment that I kept revisiting from a record that people have been just a little too hard on, in my opinion. This song was like seeing Han Solo on the Millennium Falcon again in The Force Awakens. It's like seeing two people that you know haven't been together in a long time coming together again, and it's like fucking magic. I love Blockhead's production on both Free Sweatpants and in general as a, as a producer. Y'all know I got a huge boner for Aesop Rock's music, and I love that they just, they just did it. It's just a dope song. It's got a great, uh, it's got great verses from Aesop. It's got a dope beat. It's just, it's like I'm back listening to, listening to None Shall Pass again. Like, the production is so fucking good on this song. And they just work together so well. While I love that Aesop has been doing his own thing and forging his own path, producing his own beats, I'm glad that he came together with Blockhead and made this reunion one of my favorites of the year in hip-hop. It's so just great. It's, it's so great. It's so... Everything I love about that scene in one song. So good. Oh, uh, that's not your real voice, is it? Is that your real voice? Why do you talk like that? Hey, you don't... The biggest surprise of the year is that Algiers dropped a jazz slam poetry track. Algiers are known for being industrial gospel. And, like, th this completely shattered any ideas I had about what Algiers was as a concept. I love this song. I love... How abstract it is. I love that it spits in the face of any critic or anybody that wants to pigeonhole the band as a whole. And it has me really excited for the record that's dropping later this month. It is something that I have been waiting with bated breath for. While I haven't listened to the other songs that have dropped and I've heard kind of 
makes things once I heard this this was all I needed to know that it was gonna be a bold direction shift potentially and it's gonna have some real shit in its lyrics that Algiers is known for I love it I want more of it please Algiers oh my god I'm so excited death up close now like I said in my review, I feel like this was both the best and worst foot for August to start forth on because I love the sounds on it and the acoustic intimate feeling that the song has is perfect for the record. But that sax is so very good and I wish it were more prominent on the album because it creates this sort of, again, sophisticated, tinged, uh, moody aspect to the, to the song that gives it more dynamics. And I love that for it. I think it plays really well with the guitar. I think that it suits the kind of tone of the song, of this kind of foreboding, unsettlingness to being, you know, up close to death. Um, it's an embracing life. Such a good song. Such a great opener for her album. And again, that sax fucking owns! You know, I think Haley Williams, uh, given she recently announced that she's doing solo music, uh, has it out for her to, to create some good shit, because I think that she just, she has such a good voice, and it melds so well with this tune. I think her and Mike Kinsella harmonize really well together. I think her point of being on the song and the perspective she gives to the protagonist of the song is great. It's a great other side of the coin. Um, or just at least reinforcing the the questions that the song asks, and I love that for it. As a as a as a sad boy, this warmed my sad boy heart in the best way possible. It was so very good. I I loved it so much, and it's a song that I kept revisiting because I just loved how pretty it was. Uh, I think the instrumental is really nice and spacious, and I think both uh, singers fit like glue over it. It's mm, it's so perfect. It's a great duet. And I'm so glad that it came together this well. Make it out with just a little bit of grace, but it truly doesn't give a fuck about the fear you feel, and it is here to make you understand that nothing is safe. Not only does it uh, kind of introduce, did it, not only did it introduce the idea of Clipping doing a sort of spooky album well, um, that instrumental just keeps growing on me. Like, while I loved how Lamina Orta kind of melts away into a puddle of noise, um, and how Blood of the Fang kind of ties together the concepts of some of the ideas in the album's meta text really well. And I love the, the song that kind of has the ASMR where the beat kind of shifts into the, into the focus. And I love He Dead because it's fucking noisy. And I love the chorus of that song. Nothing is Safe is just a great proof of concept uh, song. It's a great lead single. Um, and I just, it again, David gets in the cut. And I love how he paints the picture of the scene taking place. I love a good story-driven song. The story songs by um, Clipping are some of my favorites. I love the story song on um, the record as well. But this just, it's so detailed in the right ways. It's like a short horror story told through a rap song. And I love it for that, you know? I love how it's not necessarily a horror song, but because it's instrumental has this building in intensity and anxiety because of the piano kind of staccatos and the synth uh, interpolating with that, it creates a horror atmosphere, which I think was the point of that record. And I love Nothing Is Safe for that. I think it, it left the best taste in my mouth and it's a song that I keep revisiting. I was so glad that Vampire Weekend sounded like this when they came back. I love that they embraced nuances of Baggy and Madchester to create this sort of summery, laid-back rock tune that it reinforced some of the ideas heard on Modern Vampires of the City, because that's all I wanted. Do I think the record as a whole did that? No, but when it did do it, it was amazing. And Harmony Hall, such a good song. It's, again, got this pretty guitar that just kind of dances around the melody. I love the, the percussion when it comes in. I love the other little nuances that they add, like the cake instrument, or the cake the band instrument, or the weird guitar slide ups. There's just a lot of noises on this song that are playful and fun. And in a year where I was so wanting to embrace some sunshine, this was a moment that did it for me so very consistently.
It is bright, it's fun, and it's what I wanted Vampire Weekend to sound like on their new album. That was them. This is me. This is King. You ain't no Crit Hill. When Crit opened with this live, I lost my shit. This song is so hype. It kicks off his record on the playfulest of tunes. If you can't tell, I like a good, I like a good stage setter. I don't mind a good uh, showstopper, but I love a good stage setter. And Crit here just announces that he's here. It's here to get you hype. It does its job. It gets in and it gets out. It's got a fun instrumental that evolves as the song goes on. It adds in some brass and gives you some more kind of rootsier energy it's a great song that i'm glad he made because it's a great set opener because it gets you it gets you ready to throw down like the chorus gets you just so interacted it's so such a good song i'm having a hard time describing it but i mean i gotta tell you if you see crit live if you get the chance to do it because he opens with there he's he at least opened with it this tour and it's so fucking great and i think that it's it's the barn burner crits needed for a while because a lot of his songs that are like this come at kind of the middle point in the record he loves kind of easing you in to his albums not so much on here this is a hype track that gets me hype every single time it's fucking dope if you think you can save me complete opposites out of the spectrum uh way as blood created this super somber spacious song that has this beautiful crescendo to its chorus. I love how isolated she feels on this song lyrically and sonically because the space is her space. You know, this song is fitting, it's it's a well-written tune, and she sounds beautiful on it. It is a glorious song that was came at the perfect point on the album that it's on. It's this great dramatic climax, and it is... Mm. Hits me right here. It's a great song. One of y'all niggas gonna be fucking with me. I got two bad bitches gonna be rubbing my feet. I got three young niggas down the bus at the heat. And all y'all ain't got nothing to me. The best pairing of artists this year did not come from my favorite rapper and his used to be go to producer. Or one of my favorite producers of all time with one of the best rappers to pop this decade, the tail end of this decade. No. It was from an up and coming guy and Anderson fucking pack rnp showed me and showed the world that these two they make good music together you know sort of like how on lp's cancer for cure he brought together killer mike on um tougher colder killer and showed that those motherfuckers make magic together this is that kind of song to me how playful they trade off verses the chorus of this song how fun the instrumental is. This is one of the best, like, teaser mashups, like, coming together I've heard in a long time. Like, I hope YBN Corday and Anderson Pack make music together more if it's gonna sound like this. This is one of the tightest, funkiest hip hop songs I've heard all year. And a great year for Anderson Pack. This was his shining moment to me personally. Big talk. Speedboat, pray to God I don't get repo. Didn't go to college for a free. Like I said in my review of Zoo and my Spotify Wrapped, anytime I had a song stuck in my head that was something I didn't want in there, I would just sing the chorus of Speedboat or any of the other hooks that are on the song because not only is this like one of Denzel's tightest songs he's ever put on record, it's also one of the catchiest. Like this song has hooks for days. It's one of the most playful songs he's ever written from a flow perspective. He's just having a lot of fun on this track and I love it for that. Like it is just one of his best songs he's ever, I don't wanna say written because I'm sure he freestyled the whole thing, but it is an impressive song from the way the chorus flows to how it switches into the verses to the pre-chorus. Like this, there's a lot of great things in this song. It's such a tight-knit package. It is vacuum-sealed tight, and it's so fucking amazing. One of his best songs of his career, hands down. Like I said in my review of Caligula, this is one of the 
harshest albums I've heard all year, and this is one of the best moments on it. It is unrelentingly aggressive. It is somber. It is just, again, when I talked about catharsis, this is one of the songs I had in mind. It is gritty. And using this, using the Funeral March of Queen Mary as your backbeat to let it all out over just is the best use of that song I've heard since Cage sampled it to do a weird A Clockwork Orange type song back in the 90s. This song is powerful in every sense of the word. It is heart crushing. It is just hard to listen to, but I love to listen to it. It gives me goosebumps every time I listen to it. Part The whole album does that, but that's, again, a moment where it reaches an apex for me. It is so very good and hard to just not feel what she feels on it. Yeah, Twerp wrote one of the dopest Mario Kart jams that's probably never going to be on a Mario Kart song. I love the groove of this. I love the bass solos. I love the drums on it. I love the groove. I think it's really, really fucking tight. But the drums in the song are really fun. The bass on the song fucking pops. The, the various keyboard solos on it as well are so good. This is Twerp just flexing on everybody, showing why they're one of the tightest funk bands, rock bands, doing it now. <clears throat> they don't need no vocalist to write a great hook to, to, to make some dope-ass sort of laid-back summer jams. This is an amazing song and one that, again, I could not put down because I love its infectious melody. I love the, so the, the talent on display from the bass work to the, to the just super laid back sort of shaker infused uh, solos that are on here. Such a great song. An embodiment of Twerp's talent in one tight package. Typhoon Turnpike, my favorite moment on Return to Wherever, and my favorite song that came out in 2019. And that was my list. What did you think about it? Was a song that you loved not on this list? Let me know in those comments down below. Was there a song that I feel like I underrated? You know, let's let's get that discourse going. If you would like to see my playlist for my top 50 songs of the year, it's linked in the description. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like. If you want to see more of my music, gaming, and general nerdy content, be sure to subscribe. Special thanks to my patrons. If you would like to join their ranks, linked in the description is my Patreon. I'm going to get out of here. You guys have I've been Viral Rack. You guys have been in situations. And I'll see you another day. I'm having problems talking. <laughs>